Um, so far things are going really well. Uh, surgery was uh, better than expected and um, it's definitely a little bit tough the first couple days post-surgery. Um, it was really uncomfortable and my leg was numb and so I mean the pain wasn't terrible but it just was it was a rough couple of days, um, but now you know I'm able to sleep without the the CPM machine, which is this machine that continuously moves your leg overnight or whenever you're sitting down. So without that, I'm sleeping a lot better. But um, I don't know. In general, things are are really good. Oh, after the operation, I was pre drug drop, so I don't really remember. I think he pretty much told me four or five times what kind of surgery he did, <laughs> like what what exactly happened in the operation room. But um, yeah, I mean, like I said, surgery went really well. Uh, basically, I had a torn ACL, MCL, and um, a small fracture in my tibia. But uh, the tibia didn't need up, didn't need any surgery. So um, I took a hamstring graft, and uh, they reconstructed the the ACL um, with that, and did a couple of sutures and a screw to hold down the MCL, and. Uh, yeah, it, um, it went really well. You know, there was no complications and uh, everything went as well as could be expected. I was definitely really nervous going into the, the surgery. I mean, I've had one knee surgery before, but it was very minor. It was just a, a scope, you know, cleaning up the cartilage. Um, so I was, I was definitely scared, but, you know, I was really happy that Dr. Starrett was there um, and he was the operating doctor. He's been my doctor since I was about 13, so I trust him completely, and that definitely put me more at ease. And plus, you know, family and friends were were there to support me, so that helped. But I mean, it was it was scary. I, I didn't know what to expect, and you know, they weren't exactly sure how bad the MCL was, and they weren't exactly sure if there was any other damage. You know, you can only see so much on an MRI. So I don't know. I was just scared, but uh, I came out of surgery, and everything was fine, and. I'm still alive. <laughs> I was really excited when I heard that the surgery went really well. Um, they did have to do a little bit more repair to the MCL than they expected. Um, and they also had to, they had to clean up some of the cartilage damage in there. So it was a little bit worse than expected in some ways, but um, the surgery in itself went really well. But I think I was just, it took me kind of a couple days to process everything because I was, you know, coming off a lot of um, heavy duty medications and um, morphine and I was pretty out of it for a while there but um, as soon as I got off the painkillers and everything I felt really good and you know it hasn't really been that painful um, so I was definitely very relieved that it went was it that it was a successful surgery. I have no idea what I first thought after my operation. Apparently I was mumbling and jabbering about I don't know what and uh, the, f the first thing I remember was trying to stand up and get, uh, I had to actually first test out the crutches so to make sure that I could walk on my own um, and then I and then I got on the wheelchair and they wheeled me out. But that was a couple hours after surgery. I don't even remember what I was saying in those few hours. So I could have said anything. But my main thought was when I came to is that, wow, I'm really tired. I really want to go to bed. But I don't want to go to bed in the hospital. So get me the heck out of here. <laughs> it's been so great to have my sister Laura around. Um, she's been so amazing. Uh, I. I can't really function by myself because I I can't I'm hobbling around on crutches I can't carry anything I can't really do anything physical and Laura is helping me you know she's making food she's getting me ice you know she's in the gym with me helping me work out like she's really she's I would be lost without her so it's been it's been really nice to have her here and. Uh, you know, I always liked having her on the road, and I was happy that she was able to spend, you know, most of the season with me this year. Um, you know, always helping me on the road was made my life a lot better. And uh, you know, she's always a fun person. She's always excited and giggly, and just makes everything a lot better. You know, it's kind of hard to stay positive when you know you're gimping around on one leg and you can't really do much. But Laura is always happy, go lucky, and. 
I, it definitely helps me to stay positive. It's pretty much just me and Laura right now. Um, I mean, my brother's working all the time, so he's not really around that much. And uh, I mean, I go to go to therapy in the morning, I work out, go to therapy in the afternoon, and there's not a lot going on. You know, at this point, it's pretty slow going. And I think for me, the biggest motivation is just knowing that a lot of athletes have come back from this injury. Um, I mean, I think the most obvious is Adrian Peterson, but um, he, had, he had a different graft done. He had a, um, I believe he had a patella graft and I had a hamstring graft. It's a little bit different, but, um, you know, a lot of ski racers have had this injury. My good friend Maria, Maria Reich had, um, you know, both ACLs. Uh, so she's obviously skiing incredibly well. She has for many years now, so. I know it's possible to come back. It's just right now it's just a slow process and I just have to stay positive and, you know, realize that it's going to take a long time and um, just keep trucking away. Some people wrote me on Twitter and stuff and I was pretty psyched, you know. Maria Sharapova did write me on Twitter. That made my day. But, uh, oh, and also Roger Federer sent me some flowers. That was nice, Roger. Thank you. I started rehab, I mean, literally from the first day post-surgery. Um, I mean, there wasn't a lot I could do at first, and I mean, there still isn't a lot I can do, but it's mostly just, you know, moving the kneecap around and, um, you know, getting some, uh, a lot of ice on there, keeping the swelling down. But uh, I can't, I can't do really anything that's activating the muscles. I have to be pretty much 100% passive, which is pretty frustrating but um, it's gonna be like this for a while. Just slow, slow process. But um, yeah, I mean, rehab's been going great, just slow. Pain's actually been great. I mean, uh, I, had a, I had trouble, you know, the first couple days, it was pretty uncomfortable, but it wasn't anything that was terrible. I mean, they were, they had me on the right medication and was just, uh, or right painkillers, I should say and it wasn't that bad and then after but then it started to uh i, I the painkiller started to affect me and i felt like they were they were upsetting my stomach and they were just i didn't like them they were making me feel cloudy and bad so i got off of them and the pain was a little bit worse but i'd rather be you know not on painkillers and feel better mentally and physically than and have a little bit more pain than be cloudy so um since like the third day i haven't haven't been any on any painkillers and hasn't been too bad. The rehab for the next couple of weeks really depends on how my knee responds. Um, you know, if it continues to to be as good as it is now, you know, if the swelling stays down, then I'll be able to progress. But um, I'm gonna for sure be on crutches for six weeks. You know, I've um, with that the fracture in my tibia and um, just the the severity of the MCL and ACL. It's just gonna um, need a little extra time and plus you know I, I want to make sure I take it slow I don't need to rush back you know I know that once I am strong again I can ski fast so I really want to take my time and make sure that the rehab's done done appropriately I don't need to rush back so um, honestly it all depends on how things how many responds and it's literally week to week well I think at this point in the game I it's more about being patient um, I mean, I'm definitely really fired up and motivated to, you know, be ready for next year. But I can't really do much, so I'm trying to keep that motivation at bay and just wait until I can really start to push things. Um, because the worst thing right now is to, you know, get really excited and, and to push it too soon. So um, I'm trying to just stay calm and stay relaxed and uh, do what my therapists are telling me to do and not go overboard. But uh, that is very hard for me to do. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I mean, it's too way too early to tell when I'll be able to ski again. Um, I mean, I'm hoping to be on snow in November, but that could change. It could be, you know, two months earlier. It could be a month later. You know, you just don't know. So um, it all depends on how my knee responds um, with therapy and if I'm strong enough. And 
if I'm ready, but uh, I'm definitely not going to get on snow until I'm 110% sure that um, my knee can take take the the pounding of ski racing. I'm really bored. <laughs> really, really bored. Um, I don't deal well with uh, sitting around. You know, I always antsy to go to the gym or go skiing, and it's hard to be in Vail and see everyone skiing and it's powder days and I see everyone racing, you know, at the world champs and world cups and I'm not there and I'm just sitting in my room watching television shows. It's highly frustrating. Um, and it's, it's honestly a really depressing. I can't, I can't watch ski racing. It's, I tried and I did not go over well. So that's not something that's going to be keeping me occupied. Um, probably more of like Game of Thrones and Suits and Law and Order. It's probably the bulk of what I'll be doing for the next couple of weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to not get really bored. It's hard to explain, but I mean, I, in the Super G, you know, I felt like I was having a really great run. Um, Despite all the delays that we had that day, I was really focused and I was skiing really well. And I, I had exactly the line off the jump that, that uh, we had inspected. And I just unfortunately flew a little bit further than I anticipated. And when I was about to land, I could see that the snow where I was landing in was different than the track. Um, and when I landed, my ski literally stopped and and then my knee buckled and I went over my tips. Um, and I just remembered excruciating pain in my right knee. I felt almost like I could feel my whole body weight go over my, my knee, you know, over the lower half of my leg. And uh, it was not a good feeling. And I thought my initial reaction was that I broke my leg because it, it, I couldn't tell, there was so much pain, I couldn't tell where exactly the pain was coming from. And I felt like it may be that I broke my tibia but um, I think the real reason that I crashed is just because the landing surface wasn't um, properly slipped. There's, I mean, I landed in like a pile of, of soft, wet, heavy snow and it just literally stopped my ski. And uh, I think it was, no, I mean, I, I realized that I can't change what happened and, um, but I still think that we shouldn't have raced that day. And uh, I think if you pretty much asked anyone, they would say the same thing. I mean, all the athletes were waiting around for hours and hours, having a delay after 15 minutes after 15 minutes. And um, it was just, uh, just not a good day at all. And I think hopefully next time they'll, hopefully next time they'll really think a little bit harder about having races when the conditions aren't appropriate. Um, because that just wasn't, wasn't a smart decision. I mean, I think in general, just being me and crashing as often as I do, I think that prepared me for crashing that day. But, um, I mean, I've, I've been, you know, like in Torino, I've been in situations where I've had a lot of pain when I've crashed and it turned out to be, you know, not as bad. You know, I've been able to bounce back from it, but this was, this was a whole other ball game. You know, the doctors told me pretty much immediately after getting to the hospital that, you know, both my ACL and MCL were gone, and uh, and then I was freaking out. But uh, I kind of still held on to like a little glimmer of hope that maybe I'd be okay. You know, but. As soon as I got the MRI, it was definitely her season's over. Um, but, you know, the one thing I've learned in life is that uh, if I'll just get back up and it's going to take a lot of hard work, but I'll get back to, to where I was. And I think, honestly, this will give me time to be even better than I was before. So everything happens for a reason. Just have to figure out what the reason is.
Yeah. Peak with my shorts. <laughs> I'm, I'm winter.